Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series at Microsoft Flight Sim 10 and in this episode we're going to be flying the Cessna 172 out of Portland and this time in daylight thankfully uh, let me make sure that uh, we've got the correct date and time it's approximately correct I'm flying out at noon and uh, but we will not be flying out of Edwards Air Force Base we need to do some flight planning but before we do that it occurred to me that I didn't actually show you the result of my sim buddy flight log from the last flight, which was from uh, Bremerton to Portland. And so this is currently SimBuddy. And of course, it'll work with Microsoft Flight Sim 10 as well. In fact, most of the people uh, flying right now are probably using Microsoft Flight Sim. Uh, but uh, if we take a look at the logbook, we see Cessna 172 Bremerton to Portland. And of course, some of the information is locked. But it says, good distance flown, 116 nautical miles. Sync rate was good, but my landing lights were off during landing, which is true, and I made that mistake. Uh, but I did keep my uh, my indicator speed under 250 knots. <laughs> not that that was much of a problem, but uh, there you are. Now, of course, I was not carrying any passengers, so there wasn't any additional data for that. I did take a slight loop right around there, and that was when we were looking at the airport maps, airport diagrams for Portland and then ultimately landed at Portland International, flight time one hour and two minutes. Really high sync rate, 312 feet per minute is uh, unusual for a Cessna. Uh, 60 knots is good. Bank angle, hardly any. In fact, that's really low. And highest altitude, 5,200 feet. Highest speed, 121 knots. So there you are. And that has been logged. And I need seven more hours until I'm a first officer. Now, flight planning for the flight today is, well, it's got a bit of a complication. You see, uh, taking a look at Sky Vector here, I wanted to fly from Portland, which is, oh, that's Eugene. Portland is up here. And it's got a very interesting flight path for me. But the problem is down here when we get to Yuba County Airport, Marysville Airport, which is where I wanted to land, but you'll see this red circle. And that says security there, effective until June 24th. And, but it is from 4,100 to 18,000. So if you take a look at the NOTAMs, it's because of Beale Air Force Base, uh, temporary flight restrictions for special security reasons, from and including 4,100 sea level up to uh, and including 18,000, but I, I think I can just fly under 4,100, right? Well, if we take a look here, um, that area minimum 4,700, but here 2,500, so presumably I can still fly into Marysville, and I think we'll just go with that theory. I think it's okay. Uh, but Beale is right here, you see. That's where Beale Air Force Base is. The airport I'm aiming for is over here, uh, just outside of Yuba City. And as far as our actual flight altitude is concerned, we can't fly at that altitude all the way. We can use this map to see that around here, 5,600 is minimal. Here, 7,900. So I'm going to pick my cruising altitude based on the highest number I see. And it looks like there's 9,000 here. So I'm just going to go with 10,000 feet. I think that would be prudent. I don't see any obstacle that would be higher than 10,000 feet. And so we'll be flying much higher than on the previous flight. And on this flight, I am going to be using autopilot. And that is because it is a long flight. Estimated time on route, 3 hours and 23 minutes. That's within the capabilities of the Cessna. I'll probably just pack it with fuel. But uh, yeah, long flight. And we will see how that goes. Now back to Flight Sim. We're going to let Flight Sim do its own flight planning for us. So, Flight Planner. Uh, I'm going to choose Airport KBDX. Okay. And I'm going to choose the destination KMYV. And that's Yuba County. Visual flight rules. Um, direct GPS will be easy, but less interesting. VOR to VOR. 
is not a bad option. Let's take a look at this low altitude airways first. Well, that looks a lot like the route that uh, we've got indicated in in Sky Vector. And if I go, say, cruise 10,000 feet, that seems pretty reasonable. Yubba. Anyway, uh, but uh, how about VOR to VOR? Well, that's got an odd kink to it right there. Much more straightforward. It's got a sort of straight turn in there. Maybe I will go with this VOR to VOR thing just to try it out. And uh, here's the nav log. Nice thing about the nav log is that it gives you the frequencies for all the VORs, so that's really handy. This flight planning uh, also is good because it shows the estimated fuel burn here, 39 gallons. But again, I think I'm going to just uh, pack it in with fuel for this one. Um, we're starting off with 53 gallons, so that's not a huge amount of extra. And I guess I'll save it. Yes, let's save this flight plan. I might need to use it more than once. Yes, I want to move my aircraft. We've got real world weather, but let me just update that. Make sure it's got the weather at Portland. And we should take a look at whether there's any reason to think that we've got any problems. Visibility 10, ceiling 1200 though. Light rain. Oh, I see. Well, that says 1,200 feet, but the actual data online says 12,000 feet is the ceiling. No significant weather observed at this time, so there's some gap in communication here. Okay, well, we'll go with the actual observed stuff. It's not supposed to have light rain right now, but... Okay. Anything else? Well, fuel and payload. Actually, we'll probably be changing this, but right now it's a full load. And we're going to be changing it based on FS passengers, and I'll introduce you to that. We're back to the old system here, no GPS, as it were. But that'll be fine. But now we need to access F FS passengers, and we are going to begin our new company. Ah, it's not uh, picking that up. Okay, let me switch to this view. Okay, so I'm gonna set up the company here and we've got Raise Aerospace, Foundation Date. That's as far, well, I guess I could set it to 2010, but I hope it's not going to mess up as far as the dating is concerned anyway. And I'm going to set the letters to RA and I don't need to change that. Okay, custom settings. Economic mode. If you check this, you will need to buy your aircraft prior to flying. Yes. Um, I don't want to be able to get a medium airliner, but I don't like the very hard start. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. Hard small company might be good, but it is reasonably hard to make money with this. So I have to be cautious. I guess I'll start with the hard small company. If you check this, your pilots will rank, your pilot rank will limit the aircraft you can fly. Yeah. Instant record of flight. If you check this, your flight will be automatically registered at the end of each flight, even if your pilot dies. Yeah. Fixed failure setting. If you choose the, uh, the options below, a fixed percentage of failures for all your flights will have this percentage. Hmm. I'm going to go for a 1% chance of failure. I, I don't want, I, I want it to be a surprise. 5% uh, makes it sound like, you know, I'm going to have it constantly. Uh, I want it to be reasonably rare. Uh, maybe one out of every 50 flights, maybe 2%. Uh, and they'll be easy to hard failures. I don't know, maybe 2% is too rare. I mean, for a real airline, it'd be pretty rare, but for the context of entertainment purposes. Um, all right, I'll go 3%. Whoa, loud, loud. Okay, there was some loud music there. Okay, well, obviously. Um, birth date. Um, well, let me uh, 
Let me go with Veterans Day. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, let me also make myself young, because <laughs> that's nice. Player name doesn't matter. Okay, at first it occurs to me that all the music and all the sounds probably need to be much softer. Okay, but there are a lot of functions to this FS passenger thing. Okay, so now that we have a company, we have a company manager thing, and I should just buy the current flight sim aircraft. And it's gonna cost 243,000? Uh, I don't want one with 2,892 hours on it. Um, you know, honestly, uh, 316 hours does not sound bad. Let's buy that. I swear I changed uh, sounds. I'm a student pilot, it says. And I can offer different service and all that. All prices fluctuate, though it's way outdated because I think the version of the plugin I have is from ancient times. And yeah, this is for maintenance purposes. Anyway, that's ours. Okay, two passengers. Sounds good. Okay, pilot, and we'll go, we're gonna carry two passengers and some luggage. That's too much. I'll let them have 45 pounds of luggage. Or, okay, 44. We've got the names of the passengers. Adrian Cantu and Lydia Lucero. Fairly young. Okay, I think that's it. Type of flight not set. Set type. It is a normal flight. Must land at a different airport. Got it. And the different airport we are going for is Yuba County. Flight duration is expected to be 3 hours and 23 minutes, I think it said. Destination set. Okay. And so we've got a whole load manifest thing. In theory, you could print that. Okay. Now we're in business, folks. Now we are in business. Load of two passengers on board. Seatbelt sign. Okay, seatbelt sign on. Passenger satisfaction is fairly low, 91%. They've got some adrenaline. They should. Now, I'm not starting the plane in this. Obviously, we've already started it. But I know how to start it. Okay, just checking that controls work. Nervous due to weather conditions. You should be. You should be. Alright. So... I'm going to tune to our first VOR before I start and we need to get air traffic control on this so 109.2 well hopefully we'll pick that up eventually alright so now air traffic control Portland ground I'm I've actually already taxied depart south Portland ground, Romeo Dolphin 4, 6, 4, with Golf, request taxi for takeoff, south, departure. Romeo Dolphin 4, 6, 4, taxi to it, hold short of runway 1, 0, right here. Sorry, I sort of jumped the gun one, on that. Zero, right May, I, I should tell it to start me out at the gate. Portland Tower, Romeo Dolphin 4, 6, 4, at runway 1, 0, right, ready for takeoff, departure to the south. Romeo Alpha 464 cleared for takeoff. Runway 10 right. Departure to the south approved. Well, they didn't say it was IFR only or anything, so no problems. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 10 right. Romeo Alpha 464. Okay, here we go. OK, 
Okay, we are up. Somebody has logged my takeoff. I wonder why it's in red. Now, one of the annoying things about Flight Sim uh, compared to X Plane 11 is that it captures the cursor. Um, it, I can uh, sort of alt tab out, but uh, doing so means that the sound gets muted. I do have it set that it's not going to pause the simulation, which is good. Okay, Portland departure. Um, it's not an IFR. It's Class C transition. Alpha four six four is type Cessna Skyhawk. Three miles southeast of Portland. That's not. Two thousand two hundred. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Romeo Delta four six four. Portland departure. Squawk zero zero four one. Okay. Squawk zero. Transponder zero, code one. acknowledged. Romeo Delta four six four. Romeo Delta four six four. Radar contact four miles southeast of Portland. Two thousand four hundred. Clear through the Charlie airspace. Clear to the Charlie airspace. Romeo Alpha 464. Okay, let me see if I can pick up the VOR I'm supposed to be getting at this point. Wasn't able to get anything from the previous one. So maybe I've done something wrong. But the next one says it's 113.6. Ah, uh, that's not point six, is it? Okay, one hundred and eighty-three nautical miles. Yes, that is that is the way to go. But I don't want the track to be where it is right now. I want to set the track to our intended heading one six seven. Now, fortunately, I happen to know firsthand that the weather in Central California is pretty darn good right now without any clouds to speak of. So Portland departure. World travel six three zero four is at eight hundred climbing one four thousand. So I'm not expecting any particular problems landing. If there is bad weather on landing, um, they're just downloading the wrong weather. To put it bluntly. Right now I'm not looking at the Simbuddy map or really any map right now. So I'm trying to navigate properly rather than, if you will, cheat. Passenger satisfaction, 98%. They're not afraid of the weather anymore, it looks like. That's good. Progress. The Morse code, by the way, is the uh, identifier for the VOR. And so it's World indicating which VOR it is Contact through Morse code. And actually, with this system, you would, they're still talking. You would actually uh, check the Morse code to see that you've got the right VOR. Oh, okay, okay, I had it set wrong. We were actually quite on track here. That's good. Uh, so let's just make sure that we are turning towards the VOR now. Good times. Romeo Alpha 464, oh. you're leaving my airspace. Radar service terminated. Squawk 120. You're leaving Portland airspace. Okay. Squawk 1200, frequency change approved. Romeo Alpha 464. Okay, Portland approach now. Portland approach. Romeo Alpha 464 is type Cessna Skyhawk. Two miles southeast of two zero Oscar Look Romeo far request off. flight following. Romeo Alpha four six four Portland approach squawk three seven three one. Squawk three seven three one Romeo Alpha four six four. Romeo Alpha four six four radar contact two miles east of 
Okay, acknowledging Copy. radar contact. Okay, then that should be okay for our ATC communications. Still trying to get up to 10,000 feet. For an airliner, they'd totally bug you about this, but. World travel by 049er. Turn left heading 190. Come to think of it, in the tutorials, they didn't really teach you about mixture fuel mixture and how to get to a higher altitude. They, we didn't actually fly at a very high altitude at all. I doubt we're going to make our arrival in the planned amount of time though. And so to dip out and go back to display capture, which will allow me to bring over the knee board. So this is the knee board. You get it by Shift F10. And there's briefing messages. This is the nav log. So this is the flight plan that we had seen pre-flight. So I've got that. And once you hit a waypoint, it's going to log it. You see, I hit this waypoint because, well, that was pretty much immediate. And it logged it and the uh, actual uh, time en route. So it'll log the actual time en route here. The leg that we're going for right now is the longest of them. And then it reminds you about various key assignments here. Uh, your checklist for the Cessna, very important. And also includes very important keys here. Reference velocities. Okay, we are approaching 10,000 feet. And what I want to do is prep the autopilot. So, Altitude hold 10,000 feet. Whoop, 10,000 feet. Turn left heading 280, beach 58, Foxtrot. And the vertical speed will be zero, that's fine. And then eventually we want to have a heading hold. But right now it seems like we're a little bit off track here. So I'll continue just straight south to reacquire that. And I'll just manage the heading while the autopilot manages our altitude. Still very cloudy. This seems like a good time to check how I look from the outside rather than the inside. It's a plain plane. Don't have any color on it, which is weird because I thought it said it was red and gold, but not so much. Okay, fortunately, since, of course, the autopilot uses the elevator trim just because you turn it off doesn't mean the plane should go all over the place. The trim is still where it is, where the autopilot set it to be, uh, in order to keep the flight nice and level. So, it is still nice and level even with the autopilot off, but I'm going to turn it on again. And this time I'm going to have a heading hold here. Oh, wait. Um, I think I should actually reconsider that. That actually needs to be set on here. This is the heading hold thing. The heading bug. Forgot it was like that. Okay, here we go. Or have I done that wrong? No, no, it's just readjusting. The pitch is always easier to manage than the heading. And that's true for the autopilot as well, I think. So we've got uh, about 90 knots indicated airspeed. It's 83 thanks to the headwind. And it's going to take a long time for this flight. Okay, so we are now 13 nautical miles away from the first VOR, which is the longest leg and uh, we're tuned to cascade approach I'm as we get closer to VOR um, we have deviated a little bit more so I'm trying to sort of recapture the right heading through the VOR and otherwise it doesn't look like we're going to be making it in good time that's a bit annoying 
uh, and I lost a few points with the passengers because I told them to keep their seatbelt fastened for a longer than normal amount of time. Uh, I turned it off for a bit and then because of the turbulence I had them put them back on and they're current, currently a bit afraid right now. So I'm just trying to go through the VOR properly. As we see, it's still not the best weather, but at least I can see the ground and everything. Fuel-wise, we still have more than half our fuel, uh, though we are not more than halfway through our flight. It's been a rough deal because of the wind, which is pretty much against us. It's actually sort of pushing us off to the side, really. And, but it's not doing us any favors. Instead of going like 100 knots, I'm ending up going only 80. I don't know if I can get some more speed out of this with a different mixture, but it's possible that it's just this altitude. We're not going to get enough power to speed up. There is some turbulence here. You can see the autopilot adjusting the elevator trim quite often in response to that turbulence. Okay, it looks like we're close to recapturing there. Nine nautical miles out. Only 78 knots. So wait, but as we turn this way, it's a little bit better. 84 knots now. The wind heading is 250, so it's coming from our right. Looks like the VOR station that we're passing over is basically Medford, Oregon. Okay, we have passed the VOR that we have been tracking. And switching to the new one. And setting our course 151. All right, so basically 143 nautical miles, so that's going to be nearly an hour and a half for the next leg. After that, things will happen a little bit more quickly. Okay, so we're still 90 nautical miles away from the next VOR, and we're going at a ground speed of 94 knots. We've got some turbulence, so the seatbelt sign is on. We've got some mountains in front of us, and I'm hoping 10,000 feet is good enough to clear those. I believe the map shows that it is. But right there is Mount Shasta, at least how it is rendered in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, of course, you could get additional scenery and photo scenery to make it look better. We are still on Seattle Center for some reason, though we switched uh, radio communications a few times. We will have to see how Mount Shasta looks in X-Plane 11, where I have Ortho 4XP photo scenery, and it should look a lot better than this. But still, it's, it, it stands out, I mean, you can tell. I mean, there's nothing around that's even close to it. It's sort of a Mount Fuji-style volcanic mountain, you know nothing else around the landscape to obstruct it. It just sort of stands out naturally. So good times there, but yeah. Just making sure that we can get clear of these hills. You can see on the VR on the nav we can we are basically on track. No problems there. But it's going to be a lot longer of a flight than I intended. Incidentally, if you're wondering, um, you can't use time acceleration while using SimBuddy. It'll invalidate the flight, so that is not an option. And nor do I use time acceleration in my flight simulators anyway. Except for Kerbal Space Program, but 
that's a special case. So, we continue on. I just wanted to make sure you saw Mount Shasta. And we'll be passing by the town of Weed. Uh, I'll be close by. I mean, I think uh, basically it's that splotch there. Okay, so we are now in the vicinity of Redding, right at the top of the Central Valley of California. And so we've passed the mountains and everything. But we have also passed our planned arrival time. We are minus five minutes, so we're five minutes late so far, and we're going to be substantially later by the time we get there. Um, still on our way to the Red Bluff for uh, VOR, and we are 33.3 .3 nautical miles from it, going at 102 knots. So expect to be there in about 20 minutes, and then we've got a little bit more of a ways to go, maybe 60 nautical miles down to Yuba City. So far we're right on track as you can see. The autopilot has handled everything quite well as far as our altitude. I've been adjusting the heading as necessary using the little heading bug here. And the beeps from the VOR continue on. <laughs> All right, well, that's the status report and I'll get back to you around the time when we pass Red Bluff. All right, we are past Red Bluff itself and two nautical miles away from the Red Bluff VOR. And it's sort of drifting quite a lot, but we don't really need to continue with it in particular. We should be close enough to switch to the next VOR. And that is what I've done. American Pacific 6470, That's about right there. American Pacific 6470. And that's 47 nautical miles. We're 25 minutes late, and it's actually 80 nautical miles to Yuba City. So, I'm going to begin a descent. Um, 700 is a lot. Okay, I've decided to cut out one of the plotted VORs. Because it was off to the side, I'm headed instead for Gridley. And we are switching to NorCal approach, it looks like. Oh, altimeter has changed quite a lot. Well, okay, let's fix that then. Well, there's serious turbulence around here. Look at that. They're seriously afraid by this turbulence. I've turned on the seatbelt sign, but... Gotta take the autopilot off. So... I'm going to now descend. Oops. Remember how to do that. And I'm tuning traffic at my intended intended uh, airport. And I want runway 14. I'm going to announce a full stop landing there. And announcing Hero, position. Mike, Yankee, Victor, traffic, Romeo, Alpha 464 is 23 miles northwest, 8,000. Okay, apparently there isn't a regular tower there, and so now I'm going to tune this one, even though I already have it on nav 2, I'm going to put it on nav 1 now. The restriction zone is 10 nautical miles from Beale Air Force Base, but we're not aimed to Beale. Um, still, by the time the DME shows 10 nautical miles, I had better be under 4,000 feet. Oh, somebody else is trying to land at uh, Marysville as well, at uh, runway 14 ILS approach, orbit 2009. They've already been cleared, they'll be done before I get there. 
Okay, well, while he's cleared of the runway, I'll announce final. I don't know, 10 miles is too far away to announce fi final. I'll announce position. Hello, Mike, Yankee, Victor, traffic, Romeo, Alpha 4, 6, 4 is 1, 1 miles northwest, 3,700, inbound to land, runway 1, 4. Oh, there's the airport, we can see the lights there. Okay, that would leave us descending a little bit too quickly. Trim, trim, trim. I really need to double check what vertical speed I need to be at for a three degree glide slope. There are little uh, flight computers to help you with that sort of thing. And, but anyway, I need to figure that out. Not gonna do it right now though. Alright, I think it's prudent to just say that I'm on final. There are supposed to be two runways at this airport. Right now I only see one. They're not parallel though, they're crossing. I think that's a good glide slope. Going to the lights. I don't actually know if I have my landing lights on, but it's because there's sort of... oh, I think I had them off. Okay, hold on. Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, okay, flick. Okay, good. Now I have them on. Alright, and we're too high. Okay. Yeah, you can't click the um, steering column out of the way, the way you can in X-Plane 11. Too high. It's time to slow down anyway. Up too low. Okay. No particular wind around here. Come on, let's have a very, very light touchdown. There we go. Okay, I think I can turn this taxiway. 35 feet per minute was the sink rate. Very nice. Oh, this is a runway actually. This is the other runway. No, I shouldn't turn there then. I should have seen that sign. I noticed the sign. Okay. This appears to be more of a line in sort of situation than a line out. Oh, I'll just take this one. Uh, there's no ATC around here, so I can't get taxi instruction. But I'll say. Kilo, Mike, Yankee, Victor, traffic, Romeo, Alpha 4, 6, 4 is clear of the runway. So, I've done that. Okay, there we go. Control period for the parking brakes. Seatbelt sign off. All right, mode realistic flight already registered, right? Um, plan flight time, we totally outstripped. Four hours and 35 minutes is what I can jot down. Um, 
Flight distance 392. Very shaky flight. Are angry because they arrived too late. Um, didn't understand why they were required to keep their seatbelts on even after reaching cruise level. Uh, ticket income 436. Cargo income, fuel costs. And then there's a multiplier because, uh, well, if we really went with the real amounts, um, it'd take forever, right? So the multiplier is 50 so that we can actually have some progress. Uh, we have uh, an increase in reputation to 66, or is it decrease? I think, well, 0.09 increase. Overall flight results, very bad. Uh, pilot bonus points, made a very smooth landing, landed at a scheduled airport. Uh, penalty points, arrived too late at the destination, so we really have to set those timings right. We're getting to set the proper flaps, and uh, actually, that, yeah, Probably if I just made a shorter flight, it'd be better. Proper flaps during takeoff. I did. That's that's up to my judgment. Well, anyway. Okay, I guess I'll have to do it their way. So, yeah. Uh, not the best thing. I'm actually negative on points there. That's not good. So, if we take a look at uh, company manager, pilots, me... Uh, negative 420 points. Got some flight time and we can view flight log and um, pilot detail and then the rank info. The rank info is important so this the, uh, the points don't matter for this uh, but um, basically my flight time will determine what kind of plane I can fly. You can see right now I cannot fly a uh, plane other than a single engine prop less than 3,306 pounds. And that'll be true until I get 22 hours of flight time. So that's pretty serious, especially since I'm not going to be doing it all in this simulator. So, yep. And then I'll get a multi-engine prop less than roughly 2.5 tons, and eventually certified turboprop. And then, so, uh, in order to fly a jet I'm going to have to have 70 hours. So there is your career progress right there. And of course, somebody logged this flight as well. But I'm very bad. You wouldn't have thought it was very bad, but it was very bad. because, Especially because I didn't set the right flaps, apparently, on takeoff. I did set a notch of flaps, by the way, but they wanted two notches of flaps or something. Okay. So on that note, with this flight complete, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.